Hello, fellow human! Hope you guys have a great day and let's read some r slash entitled parent stories. To the first one, entitled mom says she will sue me for stealing her baby's art. Entitled aunt threatens to sue me over stealing her baby's art. Oh my god, I cannot believe this just happened. I can't post pictures, but I'm going to post a conversation. I hate my life, oh my god. This is a text exchange that I copied and pasted right from my text. I'm 17 and EC is 19, both female. Me, post a picture of my drawing on Instagram, then it automatically gets reported for fraud. The following exchange then happens. Entitled cousin, EC, are you ducking Sarah's? Me, what? You know that I also draw, so do thousands of other people, EC. EC, you can only paint? I'm the only person in the family that can draw animated or digital. Me, what? <laughs> oh, okay, listen, this is getting stupid. You got what you wanted and I deleted my TikTok. You're not just going to attack me because of the fact that I also draw. EC, I'm going to tell my mom because she doesn't think you should be an artist either. My mom says that I'm the only artist in the family. EC again, I'm going to tell my mom. Me, you're like, what, 19? Entitled on then text me. EA. Payton, this is EA. I think this is really getting out of hand. EC is really upset. I won't tell your parents as long as you agree to not sell that drawing. You're going to ruin EC's chances of becoming an artist. Please, just take into consideration she is older than you. Therefore, she chose to be an artist before you did. You always have to be in second place. I'm sorry, that's just how social conduct works. Me. Alright, entitled aunt. What is sad is that I know that EC actually had to have her mom text me because she doesn't know what half of those words mean. Well, this has been a nice conversation. I shall be telling my parents about this interaction. Then it went quiet for a bit. Then I got this last text that I was not expecting. EA. Hey then, you cannot sell your art of animated characters because that's what EC does. How dare you draw Stitch? You cannot make drawings of EC favorite Disney character and sell it because if you sell it, you will have to give money to EC. You do not have the right to take business away from my child because she deserves it more than you. Me, EA. Uh, I made a poster. I can sell it if I want to. And no, I do not have to give the money to your daughter. I shall be selling the drawing for 20-ish dollars and you won't see a cent. Please leave me alone and I will be telling my parents about this. EA, I will sue you because that money belongs to my child, not you because you stole her art. I stopped responding like what the hell? The entitlement is real. God help me. Just for your information, I don't actually plan on selling this art. If you DM, I will offer you something else because of Disney's rights. Update. I told my cousin about the fact that so many people wanted to buy it and she freaked out. I just got this message. Did you sell it? Because you owe me the money from it. You are so spoiled. You do not deserve to have the money. You cannot even draw. God, you're such a pain because you have absolutely no right to take that money away from me. And then she blocked me. Just please be sure to watermark your art. Your aunt or cousin may try to steal it and claim it as your cousin's original work. The second story. My parents keep breaking my PS4 that I pay for and continue to threaten to break every new one. I'm going to start on the first PS4. For a while now, my parents are pretty big fans of breaking or disciplining us if we misbehaved. But as time went on, their discipline did not affect me because I was so used to it. Since I would show no reaction like they wanted to, they would result into taking or breaking my belongings. They would always use the same saying. There isn't democracy in this household, it's dictatorship. And you do what we tell you when we tell you. So many times I've wanted to say, every single country that tried dictatorship has failed. But I'm just trying to get the whole situation over with and not be called a dumb bud by my dad, lol. The second PS4 I bought was a new one, just like the last one with a whole terabyte. It lasted for a while. Fast forward a couple of months later, my brother and I get an argument, completely not regardless of the PS4. My mom gets mad and says, 
since you guys want to always argue, I'm going to throw this PS4 away. We were obviously still mad at each other, but then I noticed what she said and went on to ask why is she throwing out the PS4 I paid for. And she went on to say, this is my house and you will do what I say and this PS4 is the demon. So, legitimately continues to throw my PS4 about 5 feet off the ground onto the grass. I was just in disbelief that she just broke my PS4 over something that had nothing to do with it. On to the next PS4, I obviously lost trust in my family, so I bought a used PS4 with 500 gigabytes for $180. I'm pretty sure I was robbed, lol. The first thing she says when I get the PS4 inside the house, she says, I can break this one just like the others. I was annoyed and I just responded, then I'll just break your TV then. And then she laughed it off. Obviously, I wasn't going to break the TV because I don't like getting my butt beat by my dad, lol. Fast forward a couple of months and I get an argument with her because I said, I'll do it right after this match. And for some reason, she decided to unplug my PS4, grab a bat, and in front of the neighbors, break my PS4. She believes I'm emotionally attached to the PS4 and it's a demon, which I'm not attached to it at all. Just annoyed that my money has been wasted again. All I said was, if you're going to make me watch, at least do it inside without the neighbors watching after it all. She again discusses how, you do what I say, when I say, you should be thankful for all of this, and whatnot. At this point, my payback was simple, just stop communicating. I started becoming a lot quieter and not telling them about what I'm thinking and stuff like that. Just overall, being the quiet kid, I rebought another PS4 cheap and I kid you not. I got the, I'll break that one also, yes. Luckily, I still have this PS4 and I've been not using it at all with her inside the house, clearly showing that I don't trust her at all. She realized this and said, why are you playing? And I happily responded, because you might break it? I didn't look at her face because I was on my phone, but all I heard was her leaving my room, which actually felt great to finally let them know that I don't trust them at all with my belongings. If my new PS4 is broken, I'll make sure to update this forum, but as for now, I'm grounded from using my PS4, which is new. They grounded me because I was watching TV during class. A good amount of people have said, you're addicted and somewhere around those lines, but I will explain why I get so many PS4s. I play the game to be happy and make money. It's a source of income for me, and not only that, I talk to people on a personal level that do help me with my issues. Gaming isn't always, I better win. The community on PS4 has helped me a lot. There was a point where I was really depressed, and a middle-aged man said, well, I bet you have it tough, but at the end of all, that hardship is a reward that you've earned. I will never forget what he said, and to this day, I talk to him about my issues. I want to make it clear that the main reason for buying PS4 is not to play games, but to talk to someone. Talking to people over a hotline isn't the same as talking to a guy in his 20s or 30s telling you how he overcame his problems. The gaming community is the reason I'm breathing. And I can without a doubt say posting this story on Reddit helped me so much on realizing my mistakes and what I should do. I've decided to start saving up money to leave this toxic household. I'm going to try to buy an apartment or find myself a roommate. I don't really want the police involved in my problems as well, mainly because my parents aren't from here, so if they get deported, it'll cause issues to my siblings as well. As soon as I'm 18, I'll take a lot of other people's advice and make a separate bank account and block their number for around a year, basically separating myself from their life in general. I had a very long talk with my cousin about my parents and he said exactly, well listen man, this is something even my mom has noticed. She was a bit sad that you've become numb to the things your mom and dad says to you. He then went on to tell me how my parents treated others, basically being jerks. That must have been tough as hell. I really don't know what to say besides hang in there, and I hope you can achieve your goal. The third story, and pushes me in my wheelchair away from my family. A few years ago, I was living in Vegas and an entitled mother literally wheeled me away from my family. I have a number of health issues and after a few botched surgeries and neurological damage, I was bedridden. I never left my house slash bed except for doctor's appointments. I hadn't been out at all for two and a half years. I had worked really hard on my daily physical therapy and my balance had greatly improved. 
My family came out for a visit. My husband was stationed at Nellis AFB, and I was so excited to surprise them with my improvements. I could stand and walk and was actually wearing pants. To celebrate, I wanted to go see the fountains at the Bellagio. For most people, this is a nice outing, but for me, this was years in the making. I was nervous I might get overtired and lost in the fast-moving crowds, so we had to bring my wheelchair. We needed a schedule for the fountains and arrived super early to secure a spot in front where I could see from my chair. It was such an important moment for all of us. We lined up by the fence and no sooner did the show start, I felt this jerking on my wheelchair. I thought maybe someone had tripped on me and I immediately looked up to apologize. I was pretty self-conscious and ashamed of being out in wheelchair in such a big crowd. When I glance up to apologize, I see this woman with a small child on her hip using one hand to literally pull me away from the fans. Because she was only using one hand, she spun me completely around to face the street. I was stunned. I could hear everyone reacting to the fountain show, and here I was looking dumb awkwardly facing a bunch of strangers. I yelled for my husband, but he couldn't hear me over the noise. I looked behind me, and this woman had plopped her child up onto the guard rail, never made eye contact with me, never said one word to me, and had treated me like a piece of luggage. I tried to stand up, but the people around me had crowded me so much I didn't have room to push my chair back enough. I desperately looked around at the strangers in front of me hoping someone who had seen what happened would help. It then dawned on me that this was a huge family slash friend group. They all began nudging me aside further and further away from my family. It all happened so fast. I found myself pushed into the walking area where people who weren't stopping to watch the fountain show were quickly trying to walk past. People couldn't see me through the crowd and were stumbling over slash past me. I couldn't see my family anymore and was trying hard to push myself up out of my chair the way my physical therapist had taught me. I feel someone grabbing my chair again and I panicked I start yelling, No, please, no! And then I realized it was my husband. He had a glance to check on me to take a picture of me being out for the first time and I was gone. He had to find his way through the crowd, the same family group, to find me. I burst into tears. I don't know why, but it was like all drama from the last few years hit me all at once. I told him they had been pushed me away. And after putting it together, my husband was pissed. He turned to this group of people and demanded to know who had pushed me away. By this time, the fountain show was pretty much over. The group initially just ignored my husband like they had with me, until I pointed out the woman with her child as the culprits. My family confronted her, nicely I might add, and tried to explain why a wheelchair is an extension of a person, etc. She at first pretended like she didn't speak English, but I had heard them talking amongst themselves in English while they pushed me away into the walking area, and I told my husband as such. She then gave up the act and told my family about how I was in their way and probably couldn't see anyway. And the man with her claimed, in a raised voice, that in their country, they don't take their shameful family members out in public. To which my husband responded, well if that were true, none of you would be here. I was maybe even more shocked by his last sentence than being wheeled away. I managed the courage to tell him what he said was bullcrap and that I'm sure people in your country are actually kind and would be proud if I was their daughter. I remembered the exact words I said because later I was very proud that I stood up to them. The group sort of collectively scoffed, spoke to one another quickly in what I think was Hindi, and slowly walked away as if nothing happened. We didn't stay for the next show because I just wanted to go home. I don't know which is worse, pushing a disabled person in a wheelchair out of your way or wrongly painting your countryman as prejudice. I'm so sorry this happened to you. That is disgusting behavior and I hope the karma follows them. The fourth story. My auntie expects me to give back a cookbook our grandma gave to me 10 years ago after less than 4 days after grandma passed away. So, my grandma gave me this cookbook that has been passed down 4 generations in the family making me the 5th to have it. She gave it to me when I got a house and started university 10 years ago. My auntie was in the room when it was given too. My one cousin was jealous because she thought she deserved it as I didn't spend much time with grandma living far away. My auntie is the product of pure devil. She's the most emotionally abusive person I've ever met and hates my mom for fighting real love and remarrying after she got divorced. She expected my mom never to even date again like her. Well, in December, my grandma passed away on my birthday. She was my idol and role model, and she loved me, and I love her so dearly. 
I was the last person she remembered before Alzheimer took over completely. Well, not even three days later, I found my auntie is looking for this book and demands it so she can make copies for the entire family. My eldest cousin thinks it's her birthday ride, and my other girl cousin just had a baby, so she thinks she deserves it so she can pass it down to her little girl because I can't have kids. I'm having a hysterectomy this next month. I've told them all to screw off. Grandma gave this to me 10 years ago before she got sick, before I got sick, not that dad matters. She gave it to me, and I don't have to give it over to anyone for any reason. Not even roommates were allowed to touch this book. None of them are speaking to me now, and I'm really ducking mad. I'm so disappointed over their entitled feelings and throwing it at me that I cannot have kids. I turned 27 the day my grandma died. I want kids, I just can't medically have them. No one is getting this book. She gave it to me, and she was the only person to ever accept me as family. I miss my grandma. I wish I understood the meaning of family. What is written sounds bizarre to me, and I want to feel those good feelings. Just to clarify, I'm hurt because they won't speak to me. They're speaking to everyone else instead of me. I haven't heard one from this auntie, but she said everything to my mom and hurt my mom so much more, and my mom had to relay it to me, thinking I had sold a cookbook because my mom and I weren't talking when grandma gave me the book 10 years ago. So I either never told her, or it was so minor back then she forgot I had it. I don't have any respect for people who talk to others about a problem, but not to the person who is the only one that can rectify the problem. She shouldn't have involved my mom. The book is extremely delicate and cannot be copied unless painstakingly by hand. This book came from her great-grandmother, my great-great-great-great-grandmother? From England, on the boat with her to Canada. I've been working on making a quote-unquote copy of it digitally already for years, but it's massive. It has sections in it about meat cuts, canning, and even table settings which way the knife blade should point. It also has every generation's writing in it as they scored recipes. I remember crying the first time I got to mark my first recipe as excellent. My auntie was in the room when my grandma gave it to me the first time. It's been 10 years and I've spoken less than a few sentences to that douche canoe because of the things she did to me when I lived with her for a short time. I'm not spending any time giving anything to her. She also didn't even ask me herself, but did it in a way that it demanded my mom make me give it back after explaining to my mom she agreed with me. Venting and all the opinions that were well expressed has given me a really good ideas on how to safely copy or digitalize the book and how to preserve it when I can afford to. So when I find a store to do it, I'm going to have copies made for each of my cousins only for next year on the date. A birthday present from me to everyone in memory of the best person I had the honor of knowing. If her auntie wants a copy, she can borrow one of the kids' version to go copy. I'm not going out of my way for her, but I do really respect this gift and won't covet it, and it'd be lost to the family. I'm also going to leave out a few pages of the book that have the recipes that are my favorite, and I'm known for them specifically for because they are so amazing, and I just want one thing to be mine and grandma's. I think that is a more than reasonable compromise for all the work I'll be taking on to afford the process. Nothing crazy, like 5 pages only, the book is hundreds of pages long. When I read that the aunt demanded the book and intended to make copies, my first thought was that she would never give it back or it would be quote unquote lost or something. That's it for today fellow humans, thanks for watching, be sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe, see you guys next time. <laughs>